Yep, I got new plans. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So here is another classic houseplant haul video, part one. Yes, we're gonna do this in multiple parts. And that's because I've been going on a bit of a panic buy as we head into the winter season here in Canada. So normally during the winter season, I don't buy any plants. So that's really from October all the way up to March. Maybe occasionally, you know, if I walk into like a grocery store and I find like a Christmas cactus or a poinsettia, then I'll definitely pick those up. But for the most part, I don't buy any like tropical houseplants. So knowing that, that I wanted to just get my last round of purchases uh, before we got into that but I kind of got a bit overboard and it's funny because you know if you guys have been following me on my Instagram I was sharing a real story that the journey of a new plant parent typically happens pretty quickly where you start off with one plant and in a few weeks you got like a hundred but I find that that's still the case for me to this day so I pretty much accepted the fact that I'm crazy about plants I love them and I love expanding my collection and adding new ones but at the same time I'm always encouraging everyone to be mindful of your purchases make sure that you are still buying responsibly whether that's a financial perspective don't go beyond your means or that's making sure that the plants you are getting are from a reputable seller not those sketchy ones that are poaching plants so definitely do your homework but without further ado I got about seven tadas here if you don't want to hear the tadas you can get off my video I'm just kidding but without further ado let's start with the tada the string of spades so it's a seropegii woodii exactly to my string of hearts but I'm not too sure if this is a subspecies of it because the shape is is not that of a heart this is more of a spade unlike this guy who's got more of that heart shape but the pattern is very similar and you guys can see here very very similar I'll put these guys side by side except the difference here is this one has more of that pointier leaf but it is still a succulent vine and obviously when it comes to uh, Seropegii woodii I find they do really really well in a south facing window a lot of bright indirect light making sure that the medium potting you have them in is well airy and well drainage like mostly cacti soil and uh, yeah these guys trail really really nice so I was really happy to find this one. I found this at our local uh, plant shop, 217 Market. And um, yeah, I, I've been wanting one of this for a while because obviously you guys know I love my string of hearts here, but to have a huge um, plant, like a string of spades, I think that would look really, really cool. So I found this guy there and uh, yeah, excited about it. So the next plant I also got from 217 Market is the, ta-da, the Hoya Astralis Lisa. Check this beauty out. You guys know I love Hoyas. I started to really expand my collection this year. I think this is my 14th. Uh, Hoya variety and this one is a stunner uh, first of all the variegation on this it has that multicolored green yellow creamish plus the pink on the top and uh, man the pattern on this looks like watercolor art but also if you look closely I find that the way the um, variegation kind of where it meets and ends to the new one it kind of gives that like origami like bent look from afar so really really cool and the leaves I find are a lot thinner than what your typical Hoyas like a Carii or an Ovavada so a little bit more softer in any event this looks so cool I've seen one actually that's stacked up pretty high so these guys kind of grow up and it looks like an ice cream cone like you know the ice cream at the base and then the cherry which is the pink new leaves at the top really really cool looking when it comes to Hoya care I kind of treat them very similar to succulents where I give them a lot of bright indirect light and I only water when the soil is dry completely or when the leaves starts to feel a bit more soft and uh, I also make sure that the potting medium is in a more well drainage one so a little bit more cacti soil maybe some perlite and some pumice or a bit of orchid bark and then top it off with a bit of regular potting mix and uh, they do really well in that type of medium but uh but yeah I was really excited to find this Hoya Australis I know a few of you guys have commented on my Instagram especially those in Australia where you guys can't even find this plant so this was pretty cheap as well too I think it was like $40 $45 and considering that some of these plants are going for like maybe 60 bucks on Etsy right now uh, but yeah so really really happy with the Hoya Australis Lisa now the next plants I got are from uh, local online sellers and and uh, yeah, so these are pretty cool and I'm excited to have them. So the first one we're gonna show is the, ta-da, the Philodendron Ghost. So you guys know one of my wish list plants was the Philodendron Beauty. I do prefer that one more so than the Ghost, but I couldn't pass on the Ghost when the opportunity presented itself uh, because it is still a beautiful Philodendron. I love the shape of the leaf, first of all. But what's cool about this particular Philodendron is they are climbing plants. So obviously these guys are gonna want something to climb on. But when the new leaf does open up, and it has a new growth here that's starting to show, but as this leaf unfurls, it starts off pretty like white and yellowish color and then as the leaves mature it becomes more of this darker green form and uh, really really cool philodendrons so I know some of you guys are asking what you're taking on more philodendrons I thought you were having issues but I'm happy to report that I'm actually starting to figure out how philodendrons work for me in my home and in my environment and what I was doing wrong 
So I will do another houseplant update in the future, but I'm happy to report that the melanochrysum is doing well. In fact, I'm able to at least propagate it and make more of it. And then my philodendron silver sword that was just a cutting is also doing really well. I have it in the humidity box. And uh, the gigas is also doing well. So I'm starting to become a lot more confident and trust myself knowing that I can care for philodendrons. So that's why I started to add a bit more. And this is the latest addition to my philodendron family. So the next plant I want to show you guys is the... Ta-da! The Anthurium forgetii. So this is a beauty. It's such a baby plant still. It's still a seedling, but uh, Anthuriums is is another one that I just recently started to add to my collection this year. The first two or three years, I didn't touch any philodendrons, especially not these more uh, uncommon philodendrons or uncommon ethereums, but uh, I fell in love really with my Clarinervium and my Crystallinum that I got earlier this year. And those two plants are doing so well right now. So of course, when the opportunity presented itself, I couldn't say no to this little guy. And what I like about this is the fact that it is still a baby plant. So I can watch it grow up and watch leaves mature and have those veins start to show and pop. So that is the one thing I also enjoy about, you know, caring for plants is also buying them when they're small and then watching them grow up because I do find it a little bit more satisfying than getting like a full and mature plant, uh, which again it's cool as well too right so uh, but yeah really happy with this guy so the next plant I want to show you guys is the tada the Monstera Celta Picana so this is a pretty cool plant and I was so happy that you grow Glen Coco uh, added this to my purchase as a gift and it's just a cutting but it's a Monstera and these guys grow really fast and they root well already and it's already got roots and one thing I really like about this guy is it has a very similar shape to my Cebu blue also has a very similar like tone and color to it but this has more of that silver and dark green variegation like throughout the leaf it's almost a cross between like a Cebu blue and maybe like a jade satin synthesis in terms of like the color patterns with the green and silver on it so really really cool really happy and again I can't wait to watch this guy grow I've seen pictures of them on a moss pole and it looks really really stunning so really really happy so when it comes to taking care of a cutting especially like a monstera like this currently right now it's planted in wet speg the moss however I do prefer to have mine in water and allowing those aerial roots to then develop more roots before I transfer this into soil so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how this guy doesn't speg the moss but eventually I think I might want to switch it over in water so that way I can just watch the roots grow and I might actually leave it there for the rest of the winter I'm not sure we'll see when it's ready to be transferred into soil but yeah really happy with this little monstera celta picana so um, next plant I got is the tada so I did get another uh, Ethereum for Kedii this was also an additional uh, gift it was a single uh, leaf one it's beautiful it's a little bit bigger and taller than the other one but uh, really really cool and again this is why I love this anthurium I like the shape of the leaf a little bit more and uh, the way the veins and uh, the leaves are so really cool that I have this one uh, just in case maybe one dies on me or not but I'm pretty confident that I think anthuriums love me and I love them so we got a pretty good relationship going on but uh, next plant I got is probably gonna be my favorite uh, plant out of this bunch and it's an anthurium that I didn't know I needed but I'm glad I got it because it is just so beautiful it is the tada the anthurium dora yaki so look at this beauty and look at the pattern on those leaves and oh man i i fell in love with this as soon as i saw it. when i first saw the picture i was like that is a beautiful anthurium but seeing it in person i was i was in awe a uh, very, very similar feeling to what I felt when I first opened up the Melanochrysum uh, a few months ago, but it is so cool. So it is a hybrid. It is a cross between a Crystallinum and a, a Clarinervium, which uh, I both have and both love that plant. But this one is so cool because the leaves are a little bit like thicker and I find that the veins, the white ones, are a little bit uh, more wider as well too. And it has a bit of that crystal shine throughout its veins. And the one thing with this one uh, versus like a Clarinervium or most Anthuriums is this one actually grows wider and more flat versus uh, the Anthurium Clarinervium. Uh, it kind of grows up more upright where the leaves kind of, you know, face down. And you guys can see right here that the leaves are facing more up uh, rather than down like a Clarinervium. But uh, yeah, really, really happy when, when I got this. I, I mean, it is so beautiful and and like I said, you know, have a really good relationship on Ethereum so far, you know, they do well in my home. I normally will acclimate a lot of these plants, put them in the greenhouse when I first get them, just making sure that they are getting that humidity that they're used to before I kind of like move them out. But I think a lot of my Ethereums I'm going to start putting in a greenhouse. I'm actually looking to purchase like a cabinet style greenhouse to make it look a little bit more presentable rather than having those green plastic uh, greenhouse, which is great for cuttings and whatnot. But in terms of like displaying your plants, I think I want to get a couple of those from Ikea. So 
well maybe do like a video vlog on how to set that up and how to kind of get some lighting for it and whatnot which we're definitely going to need a couple of those because like I mentioned this is just part one of my houseplant haul video there's a few more babies coming so we definitely want to make sure we have a crib ready for them and a home for these guys to uh, really thrive and do well especially as we head into the winter season so there you guys have it those were the seven tadas comment below and let me know if any of these plants interest you which one did you find cool which one didn't you like and again I just want to send another friendly reminder to make sure that you are buying responsibly and buying plants that make you happy and that bring you joy not because someone else got it or you're trying to keep up with the Jones it's weird of me to say that considering I just stood here for the past 10 minutes showing you guys some of the plants I got because the reality is some of these are a little bit more on the higher price end and I am very grateful and thankful that I am in the position to purchase some of these plants partly because of all of your support on my channel so really really appreciate that and thank you for it but again make sure that you are staying within your means uh, make sure that you're buying only plants you want to buy and also on top of that if you are getting like a lot of these uncommon plants from a seller make sure you vet the seller and make sure that they are reputable uh, before you go ahead and purchase some of these plants but uh, yeah other than that hopefully you guys enjoyed this video we'll definitely balance this out with another top five of my favorite common and basic houseplants in the next one so we'll see you then peace